Hello, my name is Jason Gregerson, and this video is going to be on trig substitution. Specifically, we're going to assume you already know the basics of trig substitution, and we're going to go over a difficult example of trig substitution that brings in several different features. So here's my integral I have right in front of me. It's the square root of x over, or it's the x over the square root of negative x squared minus 8x plus 3. We're integrating that function. So the first thing I'm going to do is a little algebraic simplifications um, to get into the correct form that I want. So, first I'm going to pull out a negative sign in that expression. And then I have a polynomial under there, but I really want to complete the square on it so I can get something squared minus something else squared. So how am I going to do that? Well, I have x squared plus 8x, and basically I want to put in the correct value of here that will make this a perfect square. And to find that, I look at this term, the 8, I divide it by 2 and I square it. So I take 8 divided by 2, I get 4, and when I square it, I get 16. But of course, I can't just put that value in, I need to make sure this is still a quality. And so what I had before was negative 3, and so what I see that 16 minus 19 is negative 3. So what we see here is that I haven't changed the value of the expression at all, I've just rewritten negative 3 as 16 minus 19 instead. <coughs> That lets me get to the reason I put in that 16 is so that I have this as x plus 4 squared minus 19. And now I can distribute the negative sign, which will make it look like that. And then I'm going to write this as the square root of 19 minus x plus 4 quantity squared dx. So now I have this in the form where I can see the appropriate trig substitution. So what's the purpose of trig substitution? It's to take this difference, where I have something minus something squared, like a number minus something squared, and turn it into just something squared. Because if I have just something squared, then I can easily compute the square root of that. It would just be the something. So that's the point of trig substitution. So how do I do this? Well, I recall that I have cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. This is the main identity that's going to give us all these trig substitutions. Now you're often told there's another important identity that comes with this, but really it's just from dividing this equation through by cosine squared theta. So this is the first trig identity. The other trig identity would say take this equation and divide through by cosine squared theta. In that case I would get 1 plus the tangent squared theta is equal to 1 over cosine squared theta or secant squared theta. <clears throat> so this would be the other important identity. And now I need to match the form that I have in my integral. Here I have number minus something squared. Well I can see that if I subtract the sine squared term in this identity, that I would get cosine squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. So I have a number minus something squared gives me something squared. So all I need to do is turn this expression into something with that sign. So now it's a specific expression that I'm going to need to use. <clears throat> well, one problem is that they don't have 1 minus something squared, they have 19. So I'm going to take my identity here and just multiply through by 19. And so now I just need to turn this into something squared. So <clears throat> I'm going to take x plus 4 equal to the square root of 19 sine theta. That's going to be my substitution right here. Now when I make that substitution, my integral looks like Now my denominator simplifies to 19 minus, and then I have x plus 4 squared. So I'm squaring this, I'm squaring this. When I square the square root of 19 sine theta, I get 19 sine squared theta. dx. Now of course, now that we're converting our variables from x over to theta, I need to make sure I change them all over to two thetas. So how do I do that? 
So let me rewrite my substitution. I'm letting x plus 4 equal the square root of 19 times sine of theta. That tells me that x is equal to the square root of 19 sine of theta minus 4. So I can replace my numerator with that value. The square root of 19 sine of theta minus 4. And then I have to find dx. So what I can do is take the derivative of x with respect to theta. I'm taking that derivative. And that derivative is going to be the square root of 19 times the derivative of sine, which is cosine of theta, minus 0 because the derivative of 4 is 0. I'm going to multiply it through by my d theta as a notation issue. And so I'm going to substitute in for my dx. The square root of 19 cosine theta d theta. And now we're going to see where the, ma the magic happens. Now this integral, if I look at the denominator, what I can do is pull out a 19. That would give me the square root of 19 times 1 minus sine squared theta. But 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. And so what this really reduces to is the square root of 19 times the cosine of theta. And now in this case I can see that it actually cancels with my term on the right. So this term cancels with this term. The result is I have the integral of the square root of 19 sine theta minus 4 d theta. And now my hopes have been realized because this is a much easier integral to integrate. I can do this integral. I'll integrate it term by term. The first term, the square root of 19, comes out and I'm really just integrating sine theta. The integral of sine theta is a negative cosine theta. Then I'll integrate the negative 4 and get minus 4 theta. But I do have one more step. My original question was posed in terms of x, and so now I'd like to write my final answer in terms of x. So how do I go from cosine theta and theta to x's? Well, because I have a relation that relates theta to x, namely my first substitution, oops, I can say that if x plus 4 is equal to the square root of 19 sine theta. I can divide through by 19, the square root of 19, and then take the arc sine to find out that theta is equal to the arc sine of x plus 4 over the square root of 19. So that care, take care, takes care of theta. But now I have to find the cosine of theta. And I don't have the cosine of theta, I have the sine of theta. So what I'm going to do is I have this relationship sine of theta is equal to x plus 4 over the square root of 19. Now what does that tell me in terms of a triangle? Well, if I have some right triangle, and I call this theta, <coughs> I know the sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that means this is x plus 4, and I have a hypotenuse of the square root of 19. Well, because I know two sides of that triangle, I can find a third. That would tell me that if I call this side s, that s squared plus x plus 4 squared is equal to the square root of 19 squared, or 19. That tells me that s is equal to 19 minus x plus 4 squared, and the square root of all that. So that would be this side. Lastly, I can say that if I know that side, now I can see that cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, s over the square root of 19, or the square root of 19 minus x plus 4 squared all over the square root of 19. Now I have a representation for theta. Lastly, I can put everything together and write that my original integral, which was x over the square root of negative x minus 8x plus 4 
plus 3 is equal to, and I will take my solution here and exchange the values from theta to x and get negative the square root of 19 times the square root of 19 minus x plus 4 squared over the square root of 19 minus 4 times theta, where theta is the arc sine of x plus 4 over the square root of 19. And I'll add a constant. And now, of course, there are some simplifications I could do here. I could expand the information of the radical if I want, and clearly the square root of 19s will cancel out in the left-hand term. Um, but for all intents and purposes, that is my solution. All right, so this is a complicated example of trig substitution that brings in completing the square, choosing the correct um, substitution, and also finding those offhand terms like the cosine of theta that one would get in the final solution. So that completes this video. Thank you.